So we now need to explore how rank relates to the invertible matrix theorem. And you are right, we have seen the invertible matrix theorem before. We saw this for the first time back in section 2.3. And what we're going to do now is take our knowledge of rank and the column space of A and the null space of A and the dimension and the row space and add six new properties to this theorem. So here we go. Let's let matrix A be a square n by n matrix. And the following statements are all logically equivalent, meaning that they're all either true or they're all false. So to get us started here, let's begin by assuming that matrix A is an invertible matrix. And so I encourage you to look back in section 2.3 to revert, uh, review the first 12 properties of this. And now we're adding the new ones. So if we assume that matrix A is an invertible matrix, then the columns of matrix A form a basis in Rn. So the columns of matrix A form a basis in Rn. Now if the columns of matrix A form a basis in Rn, then we know that the column space of matrix A is equal to Rn. And if the column space of matrix A is equal to Rn, then we know that the dimension of the column space of matrix A is equal to n. The number of pivot columns. And if the dimension of the column space of matrix A is equal to n, since the dimension of the column space is equal to the rank of matrix A, we know that the rank of matrix A is equal to n. And now if the rank of matrix A is equal to n, then we know that the null space of matrix A is null, or equal to the zero vector space. And if the null space of A is equal to the zero vector space, then there are no vectors in the null space of A, or the dimension of the null space of A is equal to zero. So these six new statements are logically equivalent to the original 12. Now one final love note here is that we want to recall the definition of the row space of matrix A. And we want to note that since we know that the row space of matrix A is equal to the column space of A transpose, then every single statement in the invertible matrix theorem holds true for A transpose as well. So then every statement in the invertible matrix theorem holds true for A transpose as well. So this would bring the invertible matrix theorem up to almost 30 equivalent statements. So hopefully these logical equivalences are starting to become second nature to you because it's going to be important to commit these to our linear algebra repertoire to help us simplify computation and help us simplify theory.